Hello to everyone, welcome to a new podcast. This is your pastor, Yati. I hope all is well with you. And it's Friday today, for some already running in this day, so I'm just waking up. So anyway, welcome to Everyday's Wisdom from the Gospel. Jesus, then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, teacher, where are you staying? John 1, verse 38. Great crowds gather to hear John the Baptist. And many believed and were baptized, among them John and Andrew. The quiet drama that played out on the day described in John 1, 35-42 was actually part of God's plan for redeeming a lost world. Act 1. Following the Lamb. It was John the Baptist's purpose to point people to Jesus and not to gather permanent disciples around himself. He must increase, John said. Among the men in John's congregation were John and Andrew, two partners in a finishing business in Capernaum. When John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and cried out, Behold, the Lamb of God, the two men left the crowd and followed Jesus. In John 3 verse 30 and following the verses in 36 to, and 37. Trusting Jesus is the beginning of the Christian life, but only the beginning. Act 2. Facing a decision. Knowing that the two men were following him, Jesus turned and asked them, What do you seek? Verse 38. What do you seek? Why did people follow Jesus when he was ministering here on earth? Some wanted to be entertained by his miracles, while others sincerely saw his teaching. Some were only members of the crowd, while others stepped out of the crowd and identified themselves personally with the Savior. Jesus saves and transforms people one at a time. Not and mass. We must examine our hearts to determine if our motives are right as we seek to follow the Lord and serve Him. Right actions can be defiled by wrong motives. Acts 3. Obeying a command. Perhaps the two men did not really know what they were seeking, and that's why they replied with a question of their own. Teacher, where are you staying? Verse 38. A young Jewish student asked his rabbi, Why is it whenever I ask you a question, you always answer with another question? The rabbi replied, And why 
Shouldn't I? It's, it's likely that Andrew and John wanted to accommodate themselves to our Lord's schedule and therefore offered to visit them later. So they asked where he lived. But Jesus wanted to speak with them now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. In 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. Come is a familiar word from the lips of Jesus. A gracious invitation from his heart. Come and see leads to come and drink. John 7, 37 to 39. And come and eat. 21, verse 12. Where does Jesus dwell? Not in temples or shrines made by human hands. Acts 7, 48 to 50. But in the high and the holy places. With them we who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isaiah 57, verse 15. John and Andrew were humble fishermen who had no idea what the Lord would do for them and through them in the years to come. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5 verse 5 Acts 4 Sharing the good news Listening to Jesus convinced the two men that Jesus was indeed the promised Messiah. And they had to tell others. Andrew found his brother Simon and brought him to Jesus. And we have every reason to believe that John found his brother James as well. The four men returned to their fishing business until that day when Jesus called them to become fishers of men. Luke 5, 1-11 Jesus has stayed in many places, but the one place he enjoys the most is the contrite and humble heart of his obedient disciples who are proclaiming to the world, Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelations 3, verse 20. Jesus will never push himself to you. You can have an experience where you feel that you are touched by something that someone said to you that, that comes to your heart and... You can react on a surprising moment on that. Either way with an exception or a rejection. But Jesus will never push himself on you. For those who are out there, is it your time? Jesus came long ago. And the time came that he had to leave this earth, and he did. To make place for all of us. And to give the world the chance to come to him. Don't lose time. Prepare yourself to receive him. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world.
May you be that person who receives him today and follow him as a new disciple. Wherever you are in the time frame of your life, there is no time disagreed by Jesus in not accepting you. For Jesus, all the times, all the emotions, all the experience, all the pain and hurts is the right time. Even you have a wonderful life, everything is okay to accept him in your heart and follow. May this wonder happen to you today. May the peace of God be with you and stays with you. And may his light shine upon you and keep you safe. I wish you all out there a wonderful weekend. A time to rest, a time to play, a time to enjoy, a time to meditate, a time to reach out to your own heart. And maybe do that from one another person in your life. God bless. Enjoy this weekend. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.